Hi, this is a short introductory video for um, Easier Sci-Fi Play, which is one of my game mastery books. Um, so what this book actually um, covers is, well, there's uh, 17 actual chapters of content. The last chapter is simply uh, a checklist um, of all the previous ideas. And to start with, what I'm talking about is um, narrowing your ideas down so you get a, a clear idea of what you're really trying to achieve because science fiction can be anything from sort of the Jules Verne and H.G. Wells of the sort of 19th century um, you through sort of the 1950s you know, the uh, golden era of sci-fi and you know, all you know, Star Trek, Star Wars, cyberpunk you know, it's such a wide ranging um, you know, uh, topic uh, that to actually narrow it down to what you really want to achieve um, is a really good starting point. And then once you've narrowed it down, again, another stage of refining those ideas is refining your ideas of uh, technology. You know, are you going to have um, you know, temporal disturbances where you're you know, thrown back in time. You know, Star Wars, Star Trek does that a lot. Um, Star Wars, for for example, there was never any concept of um, time travel in that at all. Um, so you know, you, then you can also have you know, you know, is the human race still confined to the solar system and there's no faster than light travel or you know is faster than light travel something that takes months and uses um sort of cryo sleep is it something that takes minutes you know you know walk factor 12 and off you go and um you know huge distances covered in you know, hours so um yeah so that's you uh you know another area of um uh, sort of narrowing your reducing the options to give you a clearer idea of um you of what you're actually going to be playing with and that carries on with um sort of the what sort of concepts um are you going to allow in your sci-fi uh, there, there's that uh, famous quote about um any sufficiently um, advanced technology being indistinguishable from magic and you know, it, it's how far do you um you want to go with that what are you going to allow in your um game and what you don't and you know, how much you how much of your players actual real life experience are they going to be to apply to your um science fiction world and then once you're you know, all of that was reducing your options and then we get into building it up again and if you're going to be inspired by um, a particular game, it's how can you, um, you know, work those inspirations into your game? Because if you're playing in the Star Wars universe, you know, players are going to probably want to see the ruined Death Star. They are going to want to meet, a, you know, not necessarily Jabba the Hutt, but you know, they, they want the cool things they see in the movies, they are going to want to experience. And that is the same for whatever genre you um or whatever you're going to um, uh, use uh, to uh, you know, to inspire your game. So, are there some advice on that? Um, and then there's a bit about um, party relationships. Now, these the the best um, you know, science fiction sort of party relationships rules I've ever seen were in the Alien game. But they uh, came from, I think it was um, Forbidden Lands. It's um, a free league. It's the thing about creating the relationships between the characters. Um, there was a, a very basic version of this in Mutant Year Zero as well, where you you would have kind of a rival and a, um, a, a, you know, a, a, a character you had a bond with and a character you were a rival against. Um, so. Yeah, I've included ideas like that. I think they're they're really strong, um, and they, they have a different role to play in a science fiction game compared to a fantasy. Um, and then there's a you know a bit more about um, you know building up um, the detail of a, a science fiction world or worlds plural, and then um, 
a bit about characters and player options you know, uh, what to consider um, you in uh, you know, what player options to allow and that feeds straight into aliens are you going to let the players play aliens if so what kind of aliens do you want um, you are they just going to be humans with rubber masks on or are they going to be you know so otherworldly that you you know, they can't really relate and you know, are you going to be um you are, are you prepared to accept that into your world and then there's a little bit about tone um which is a sort of a, a, a way of um you, know, you can have the major genre and the influences but the tone of your game um i, I think is important um it's an idea that comes from the genesis system um and it's well worth um, applying to games and then i'll go a bit more about aliens um and where you can get aliens and um you know uh, importing aliens from other games into your uh, world to you know, to give you a richer sort of di biodiversity and then this chapter chapter 11 is um all about you know, planet hopping and um you know whether to keep your players on a planet for longer or to let you know if they've got a ship to go from planet to planet you know are you going to have a different planet every adventure are you going to have a different planet every you know, sort of you know, keep you know, run several adventures on the same planet um and then there's a little bit about not only ship to ship um, battles but um you know, making longer space journeys interesting without having to you know throw pirates at them or you know you're go going into a space combat all the time um now you can see uh, as i'm scrolling through this how some topics are far more involved than others i do come across space combat and i will tell you in advance that um the summary of that chapter is um you know that i really don't like it and um, the problems i foresee with it now if you can get space combat combat working in your games brilliant um this um chapter is really about the things that can go wrong with it um and how everyone might not be enjoying it failing forward is a gming technique um, it gets a lot of bad press um, it's often portrayed as just letting the characters win all the time uh, which is not what this is about at all so i explain Explain that you know if you don't have failing forward in your core rules, then this is the idea, the kind of fail forward that I particularly like, and I would suggest you introducing it into your sci-fi games. Um, but yeah, you can read it, you know, make your own choice. Um, yeah, it, it can't hurt. Now, uh, a little about some house rules. Um, if you're not using a dedicated sci-fi system, it may not have rules for things like explosive decompression, radiation, asphyxiation, and alien atmospheres. Um, so just how to deal with that if you are, say, doing something space-related using D&D. Um, you know, saving versus poison isn't actually going to cut it as such. And that there's um, cyberpunk is a bit of a dual personality um, uh, genre. In the fact that you have this physical and um, sort of matrix-like world coexisting, um, so I, I have a dedicated chapter on cyberpunk, and then this little bit about um, uh, the body. Um, lots of games that I used to play, Car Wars, um, Steve Jackson's games, the um, you know, decades ago, and you know, that came up with this. Uh, then we considered it a problem of cloning um, your character so they couldn't be killed. And you know, Eclipse Phase has the same kind of thing where the the body and the physical attributes are interchangeable. You can upload your personality and download it into a completely different body. And that actually um, creates some interesting ideas and um and implications so there's a chapter on that and then finally we get to the checklist which has um the 17 chapters actually boil down to 15 um things to uh consider when creating a new campaign so that's it you've seen the book end to end um i hope you'll find it useful uh
you know, it, this is just kind of wisdom I've accumulated over 40 something years of playing sci-fi games. Okay, uh, thank you for watching.